I'm Stephanie Allison and I'm here in the Renegade Rides shop. If you like fast cars and racing, gear up. We've got a special guest. We're back. Today we're going to talk about drag racing and women in the sport. It's been a primarily male dominated sport for many years, but in 2019 there was a lot of new faces and a lot of them were women. And at the forefront of this, we have our special friend and special guest for today, Britt Taylor of Britt Taylor Racing. Thank you so much for having me. It's nice to be here. This is a great, a great season you had for 2019. So can you tell me a little bit about what you guys do for the races and your teammates that you work with? Absolutely. So I have, I'm really blessed to have a really awesome team. Um, I've worked with them for a long time in automotive media. I came up through uh, film school actually. So this is a bit of a, I've diverged a little bit from that. Um, but so I started in film. We all met through automotive media. We were working on a TV series. It was a, like a web series on classic cars and different car shows up and down the East Coast. So we had a lot of fun doing that. Um, we got the opportunity to start getting into more of the racing realm more recently, and that's mm -hmm. been really cool. So it's evolved over the last year or so, and it's been really fun. And I love this team. I love working with them. I'm gonna work with them forever. <laughs> They're good people. So yeah, we're really lucky to have what we've got. Um, we've got some really good cars, and we had a really good season. It was super fun. So tell me a little bit about your team and what you guys do. You need a pit crew. Obviously, you're on the media side of things. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so it takes it takes a lot of people, as, as most people could probably imagine, um, to run a team like this. We've got sort of a core cast of characters. Um, Richard is our team owner. He's awesome. I appreciate everything he does. Um, he was the one who gave me this opportunity. I'm incredibly grateful for that. Eric runs the show. Um, he's our crew chief. And he's around, he wrenches on the car, he's running things, he's doing a lot of the scheduling, he's kind of keeping things moving smoothly. Uh, Robin works more behind the scenes, but she's so helpful, we love her. Um, she does a lot of our social media, she's keeping up with all the people, um, she comes to the track a lot and films things. So everybody at the moment wears all the hats. We've got Cody, um, he's, he's our hauler, he actually brings the car back and forth to the track. Um, and he does a lot of the wrenching at the track too, so that has been awesome. So we've got this core group of people who, like I said, are wearing a lot of the hats. We, we're all filming, we're all working on the car, we're all responding to Facebook messages and this and that. So yeah, it takes, it takes a lot to run a team, but it, it's been really fun. Yeah, everybody's been really awesome to work with and I have appreciated all of them. And can you tell us a little bit more for those people who don't understand drag racing and the difference between circle tracks or street racing yeah. or anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. Drag racing has been growing a lot in popularity um, the last couple years. As I understand, it sort of started as a, in sort of the post-war years where people were coming home and they were looking for something to do and they were racing in the streets, uh, which wasn't the most safe. So uh, a lot of the airports post-war kind of came, like opened up to have people race on the on the strip. So that's sort of where it got its origins. Um, we can speak more in depth at that about that, I'm, I'm sure otherwise, but the, um, sort of our place in it is we're doing points racing this upcoming season and the way that works is cars that go different speeds can actually race each other in a, in a fair race. Um, we use what's called a dial-in. So you give the tower beforehand your your estimated time down the track. So it's we race a quarter mile track. A lot of tracks are eighth mile, um, but our quarter mile time is in the nine second range. So we'll give them our time ahead of time and then the other cars will give their times and they'll adjust where, how you leave the line according to your time. Um, so a faster car, for example, would probably leave, would definitely leave after a slower car. So they'd have a quicker light. Um, so that can be interesting. That presents some interesting challenges because if you're the faster car and you have to stay behind, you often will see the slower car out of the corner of your eye, leave the line. And you're, you're so amped up and ready to go that it like, sometimes it like you like, you, you like, what we call red lighting, which would be you disqualify unless the other person also red lights. Um, there's a lot of technicalities, but um, that would be that you leave the line before the green light, which is no bueno. So <laughs> we try to do that, but yeah, drag, drag track is straight track. Um, there's a huge range of cars. Often you'll see um, like 12, 13 second cars tends to be the 
the range that people begin around and then the real, real fast, way up at the top, um, that's like a three, three, four second range. So we're somewhere in the middle, we're, we're about a nine second car. I was running 10 seconds a lot of this season, um, but we're in the nine second range, which is really awesome. We're really excited to, to, to see that drop below 10 seconds was a really big deal for us. So seeing that drop, had to had to create a lot of work for you guys. Yeah. So you said 2019 wasn't your uh, was your first season, but it wasn't a full season for you. Yeah. So being such a rookie this year, can you tell me a little bit about how the 2019 season went for you and how you think you can use that to grow into the next one? Absolutely. Yeah, 2019 was an awesome season. It was a little bit short. We spent the first, usually racing starts from about April, at least in New England. The people down south are lucky, but um, about April through October-ish. Um, we started in just about July. Uh, we were getting a car ready. We had a six, uh, 78 Corvette that we got ready. That was the, the very first car that I drove in. And then um, I was very blessed to have my coach, Wayne Farquhar, has a um, 95 Camaro that he and his son Jesse race. And that was really cool. So that was, I moved up in just about June, July. Um, and then we bought the 68 in early August. So our season was pretty quick between August and October. We had a lot of work to do. Um, one of the first things I realized about drag racing is that it's a lifestyle, big time. There, There's a reason why families do this. like parents and their kids and it's you're at the track a lot it's almost every weekend there's a lot of work behind the scenes it's it's a lot of work and it, it's really fun um, but it is a lifestyle like you you do choose to do this especially with points raising racing um, you spend a lot of time you work on the car let things break you have to tune things there's a lot there's a lot going on so I'm blessed to have the team that I have um, the season went remarkably well we weren't sure at the beginning how things would look but 2019 was really fun uh, we did a lot of tests and tune and got the car exactly where we want it so next season um, I can speak on this further but next season is going to be uh, mostly consistency we got to get really consistent um, we were not all over the place, but it took a while to get where we wanted to be last season. So this next season's going to be racing for real. I'm excited. So at the end of the 2019 season, you had two really important things happen. Can you elaborate a little bit? I know one happened on the very last day of racing. Yeah, we were down to the wire on the last day. So because, like I said, we dipped, we were, um, we exceeded the 135 miles an hour, which is requires a license. Uh, that was within the last two weeks. And then I had, I blew a rocker like right in the last week. So we had one week of racing left. It was October. We were like almost done. Um, we we're going to finish out strong. And we, thank goodness, our, our engine guy, PK, who's awesome, turned it around in like two days and we were able to get back on the track. Uh, but that left us probably, it was about three days of racing total to get my NHRA Pro Sportsman license, which requires five runs, um, there's a half pass, and then there's two moderate passes, and then there's two full passes. And so for the bracket that I was gonna be competing in, um, the half pass, which just means I need to, you need to show that you can be consistent at the eighth mile. Um, we run on a quarter mile track, so it was a it, literally a half pass. I cut, I lifted right at the eighth mile. Um, and then the two moderate passes, we got done in the first day. And so it was that, that last day of the entire season that I had to get my full passes done. And that was, they had to be both over 130 miles an hour, 135 miles an hour or underneath um, the 10 second mm -hmm. mark. And I had never gone under 10 seconds. So we were, it was a bit of a gamble that very last day. And we started off, the morning was rough. We, I had my whole family there. Um, it was so good to see them. It was awesome. They made it out to the track. Um, and the whole team was there. We were all ready to go. And it was a long day. There were a lot of people who broke down on the track. There were fluids on the track. So they had to clean. We sat in the lanes for probably an hour and a half in between each run. So we had to get out those two last runs right before it ended. And I got the first one out in the afternoon. We'd been working all morning to get it done. Um, and then at, in the evening, right before the track closed, I think there was one run after me, I finally got my under 10 seconds, my, my second under 10 second run, and got my license. So I got everything signed off then, and we, we sent the license out. But yeah, it was down to the wire, and it was so cool to celebrate. Uh, it was so nice to have everybody there to be part of it. But yeah, it was, it was unreal. It was so much fun, but it was a last minute. <laughs> it was, we're down to the wire, absolutely. You pulled it out. You hit that finish line, yeah. though. That was Thank that's goodness. incredible. Mm -hmm. So recently, you and another teammate got to go to a pretty prestigious uh, 
trade show. Mm -hmm. We did. It's called PRI. It's in Indianapolis. It was Nisha and I. Nisha's our up and coming other driver. She drives a 95 Camaro. Um, we got to go out to Indianapolis. It was unbelievable. It was so much fun. I keep joking around that it was, it felt kind of somewhere in between a giant racing family reunion and like a race car Cirque du Soleil. It was this <laughs> unbelievable mix of just crazy cars, everybody, these high performance parts and cars and uh, people at the top of their game in racing of every kind. Their motorsports, I like. We're so deep into drag racing that we just think drag, drag, drag all the time. But there's circle track, there's dirt track, the sprint cars, and the bush car. There's like so much. So it was really cool to meet people in different walks of of racing. It was really nice. We had such a good time. We made some really good networking opportunities. We met a lot of really cool people who do this for a living uh, as well and who are really excited about this sport. So it was really fun. We, we met some really awesome people from different places and yeah, it was, it did feel like a family reunion. I can't wait to go next year and see the same people again and have conversations like, Oh, how'd your season go? And this and that. But yeah, we, we really enjoyed it. We had a great time. That's awesome. Well, we'll take a break and have a word from our friends at Evans Coolant. Most racetracks do not allow a glycol-based coolant to be used because the glycols are very slippery and if volumes of coolant spill on the track, it presents a safety hazard. However, Evans waterless coolants are authorized for use in competition at NHRA sanctioned events, including both national and divisional races. Although Evans is a glycol-based coolant, an exception is made for Evans due to its unique chemistry and performance characteristics. The reason Evans is approved is the fact that it is waterless and does not generate the steam vapor that builds pressure. Evans will operate under a much lower pressure and will not boil out, reducing the likelihood of spilling on the track. Evans isn't any easier to clean up, but if a leak occurs, it will be a slow drip rather than a high pressure, high volume spray. Evans is a safer option, decreasing the risk of coolant loss and slippery conditions. To learn more about Evans NHRA contingency program, go to evanscoolant.com. We were talking about PRI and that amazing trade show, and while you were there, you got to meet one of your idols, correct? I did. Leah Pritchett, who's one of the queens of racing, she's one of the fastest women in the world. Um, she's in drag racing as well, and she's awesome. She was so kind, it was really cool to meet her. Um, she was actually part of a, a panel um, at the trade show that was a women in racing panel. So it was all these women in racing, like really high profile, awesome people who've been doing this for a long time. Um, and it was really cool to hear her speak about sort of her journey and what, like, what it is like to be a woman in racing. I identified very strongly. She's at a significantly higher level, but at any level you do, there are certain challenges to being a woman in a, a largely male dominated field, mm -hmm. especially when there's, there's no separation. There's women are racing men every day. Um, the demographics growing big time. So it was really cool to hear her speak um, about sort of what things are like at the top. That's awesome. So coming in as a rookie woman, can you tell us a little bit about some challenges that you've been facing? Yeah, so like what I like to say is the way has been paved a lot already. Um, a lot of women have come through. There's a lot of changes been made in the last decade, two decades, even 30 years. Um, Shirley Muldowney, one of the biggest names in racing, she's unbelievably awesome. She, she really sort of started that. Um, the making it more normal to have women in racing. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been a lot since. Leigh Pritchett's one of my big heroes. Andy Erbacher is another like really awesome. They're the Force sisters. Um, Courtney and Brittany are right at the top, um, right with their dad. They, I think they even race each other, so it's pretty cool. But and we're starting to see more at the local tracks. Um, we race at Lebanon Valley and at New England, um, up in New Hampshire and in New York. And there's a lot of women um, who are coming up in more recently, but it's really cool to see. But some of the challenges that exist are there's still there. There's a little bit of a stigma. It's 
a lot of men don't like to be beat by a girl. <laughs> it's like, there's still a little bit of that. People, people are a lot kinder, I think, more so now than, than they were. But some, some just practical challenges are just equipment wise, like race suits. They're, now they actually have race suits that are specific for women. They tend to be a lot more expensive because um, we need a SFI, a, like a fire rated suit like everybody else. Um, and the way that we go is we, I use a single piece suit. Um, a lot of people will do a jacketed pants. Uh, single piece suits a little bit safer cause you don't get quite as, th if you were to yeah. be in a fire, um, no gaps, there's yeah, no gaps. Exactly. Um, so that's a little bit safer. Single piece suits are a little tough to fit, um, cause most of them are men's mm -hmm. and they don't fit quite as well around the hips region, which makes sense. Um, but there are places like race chicks. Um, I actually got to meet their president, which was really cool up at PRI. That's awesome. Yeah. And they've, they have a line of clothing for women in racing, which is really so cool to see. Um, and they do a lot of like, they do pink and things like that. I'm not a big pink person, but it's, it's really cool that they have, have suits specifically for women. Oh, no, you've got thing. red that matches your car. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yep. Uh, so there are a couple things like, uh, we like to joke about it a little bit, but uh, there's only one or two companies that make sports bras that mm -hmm. are uh, fireproof. And ideally, when you're in a car with going at high speed, you really want all of your clothing head to toe to be fireproof. Um, and that includes the, your undergarments. And there are, Simpson is the one that we use at the moment, but there are only a few companies that do the fireproof sports bras. So that's like, it's something you don't think about all that often, but it's one of those things. It's, it's just a challenge to find women's specific clothing for a lot of this. But it, yeah, there's been some, some little challenges. People, I, I will say people have been so kind to me. The men and women at the track have been so welcoming and I really appreciate everybody's support. But yeah, it's, it, it is different. It's like any male dominated field or sport. It's, it's a little bit more of a challenge to break in and you get the respect when you know what you're talking about and you do a good job. So that's, that's the plan moving forward is to continue kicking butt and know, knowing what I'm talking about. <laughs> Absolutely. So there's a real need for more women's articles of clothing mm -hmm. and things in the sport. So now here's a couple otter questions yes. for that. <laughs> You've got very long hair and you're tucked in an entirely fireproof suit. What do you necessarily do I, you have to wear a helmet, the full face helmet. I mean, helmet hair has got to be a thing. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Like with motorcycle sports and other motor sports, um, your hair gets absolutely nuts when you put on a helmet. <laughs> Mine is no exception. Um, one thing I keep in mind is it's, it's comfortable to have your hair outside of your suit. This yep. is for any women potentially watching, but um, it's actually safer to have it tucked in. So mm -hmm. often I have what I currently, I have a, we call it the donut. Um, it's a ring that goes around your neck. It's a collar that prevents too much flexion and um, any direction. But so I'll tuck my hair underneath that and then I'll tuck it into my suit. And the reason for that is if I were to need to exit the car very quickly, I have a bunch of buckles that are kind of around and I wouldn't mm -hmm. want to snag hair on Absolutely. anything. Um, also, anything is susceptible to fire damage that's outside of your suit. So mm -hmm. you kind of want to protect things and uh, it's mainly for getting out of the car. I, I try to keep it like kempt, but it's, it, there is a challenge, like a unique challenge of being a woman with having long hair with racing. Um, I know that there are men out there with long hair who I'm sure struggle in very similar ways, but it's, yeah, it's interesting. So one challenge that's also fairly women specific is whether or not you wear makeup. So I personally, I do just because that's part of my routine. I enjoy doing it. Um, I like the way I look that way. Um, but there is a challenge because every time you take on and off your helmet, you're losing like half your makeup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's interesting. Um, also there's a lot of photographers around the track. People like we're heavy on the social media. So you want to like, you don't want to look at those pictures after and be like, Oh my goodness, <laughs> that's just terrible. So personally for my own sake, it's that like it, it's helpful, but it's, there's, we, we laugh about it, but there, it doesn't make you go any faster. <laughs> it doesn't make any difference. So it's like, it's part of it, but at least for me, um, mm -hmm. I know it's a struggle for other women as well, but yeah, just kind of maintaining your appearance is, is sort of a silent expectation, but it's, it's there and you do feel it a little bit. So we've talked quite a bit about you racing and your career and everything you do. And I want to take it a little bit off track mm -hmm. and tell me a little bit about who Britt Taylor is. Okay. What's your favorite <laughs> pastime to do when you're not on the track? Mm -hmm. So I tend to be, I'm 
off the track. I'm a little bit more introverted. I like, I have two rescue cats that I adore. <laughs> uh, we just got them this past year and they're adorable. Uh, so I spend a lot of time with them. And I, I've always been into crafts. I like, I need to constantly be doing something with my hands. So mm -hmm. a lot of time it's wrenching on the car, which I really enjoy. At home it tends to be, I've just started embroidering, which I think is really fun. It's, it's definitely very removed from racing. It's very different, but I like, I like physical, like handiwork things. So I've been working mm -hmm. on that. It's the same attention to detail. You're fine. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. So it's I really enjoy things like that. Um, I've gotten into sewing and things like that more recently. But so this fun. is this is a very sporty career that you've chosen. Mm -hmm. Is did your childhood or your high school um, academic anything lead up to that? I, it's funny because there, there is sort of a disconnect. Um, I grew up sailing. I played soccer for many years. Um, I, I competed a little bit in high school. I did track. Um, I was on, I did crew. I rode for a little while, which was, that was my, actually my favorite sport besides this, of course, mm -hmm. but um, that was really fun. Um, so it, it was part of my life growing up a lot, um, but I didn't, I didn't carry it through college. So actually sports weren't really a part of my life until just more recently and now I'm really getting back into it. I, I love like in the off season, I ski a lot. I mm -hmm. love skiing. Keeps me busy and keeps me active in the winter. So there's a lot of things I, I really enjoy. I run my whole life. I've really enjoyed running. It's always been kind of my like peaceful, quiet time. So I think if I think back, like athletics and sports have always been a part of my life, but now it's like a lifestyle and I love it. I've been really enjoying it. And the holidays just passed us. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to hear one fun fact of what is your favorite Christmas movie? Oh, my favorite Christmas movie. The first one that comes to mind is Elf. <laughs> because I <laughs> love Elf. That's one of my family classics. But you know what? I, if I'm being very honest, The Muppets Christmas Carol is genuinely probably at the top of my list. And I'm, I'm not ashamed, a little bit ashamed, but I'm not super ashamed to say so. It, it is a classic, a holiday classic. <laughs> it is a classic. <laughs> yes. So we did just talk about the entire 2019 season and everything that went along with it and the holidays passing and all that stuff. So what's gonna be your 2020 vision for this upcoming season? My 2020 vision, well, we're really like unbelievably excited for the season. We love doing this and we, we can't wait to do it for an entire season. We got sort of a clipped season this year. Um, so this upcoming season is gonna be awesome. We've got a lot of upgrades going on in the car. Uh, we're getting a new front clip in. We've got, uh, we're doing some paint, which doesn't make you go faster, but it's definitely exciting. Uh, we got the new carburetor we've talked about a little bit on our, um, on our channel, on our Facebook page. But that's a much bigger carb, and it's gonna we're gonna get some horsepower out of the whole system. It's gonna be awesome. But my my big goal um, is gonna get is going to be to get very consistent this season. That's that's how you win races. You you leave the line at the exact same time. You roll up the line at the same spot every single time. Um, you really have to be, like feel the car, know how things are going. Um, there's a lot of factors that go into being consistent, like understanding that the weather affects how you run. Mm -hmm. Like if it's a really hot, humid like awful hot New England day, it's gonna to be tough running. Um, but if it's a nice crisp like fall day or in the spring, um, you tend to run a little better, you run a little cooler and cooler's better. Um, so we're, we're hoping, my big goal is to get consistent um, just for points racing this year. But yeah, I can't wait. I'm so excited. It's gonna be really fun. <laughs> so you mentioned the new paint job. Yes. You did post a poll on your social media we about did. what colors mm -hmm you were thinking about. Is there any sneak preview you can give any us or is that peaks? gonna be a surprise on opening day for 2020? I think it's gonna be a little bit more of a surprise. So if you're really interested, if you're very excited about it, um, take a look at our Facebook page. We're at Britt Taylor Racing on Facebook, also on Instagram. It's also Britt Taylor Racing at Instagram. We're mostly active on our Facebook page at the moment, uh, but we've also got YouTube coming through Renegade Ride. So we have a YouTube channel up and coming. So keep an eye out. It's gonna be pretty cool. There, it, The car is gonna look quite a bit different uh, for next season. So that is pretty to. exciting. And mm -hmm. if I do remember right, you did promise a hair color change. I did. <laughs> so if we do in fact go through with this, um, with this anonymous car color change, <laughs> I will probably be changing my hair to that color, which I've never done before. This is the first time I've done my hair color in my whole life. So it's, it's a little crazy, but I'm really enjoying it. It's been the quite whole, fun. The whole race challenge is a little crazy it and is. a little fun. So, so why not? With it. Absolutely. I agree. Well, thank you 
so much for being with us today, Britt, Thank taking you. time out of your busy schedule, wrenching your Absolutely. car, and getting it all amped up for 2020. And we can't wait to see what this season brings for you. Mm -hmm. I know I'll be rooting you on from the sidelines. Thank and you. I can't wait to see what the team does. Is I there any it. parting thoughts you'd like to leave us with? Any parting thoughts? Well, if you haven't already, we would love to see you on our Facebook page, um, our Instagram, and our new YouTube page. And just keep an eye out for things coming this 2020 season. It's going to be so much fun. We're, we're like super excited. We can't wait. We love what we do. We've got a good team. We've got a good car. Um, so yeah, if you like racing, if you like cars, then check us out. Absolutely. Well, thanks for staying with us at Renegade Rides. I'm Stephanie Allison and have a great day.